Hey guys, this is Kronos 1.4. This is a production-ready prototype of the camera that will be hitting Kickstarter in the next few months. This is a very significant upgrade from the previous design. Uh, I've changed the image sensor to Lux uh, the Lux 1310, and that is about twice as fast as the old one. Uh, the 1.4 in the name refers to the pixel throughput of 1.4 gigapixels per second, compared to about 750 megapixels per second on the old camera, and the sensor is about one-fifth the price to boot. Operation is completely standalone via a touchscreen UI, you don't need a computer or anything like that. Uh, the software is in a sort of development state right now, not particularly uh, polished or pretty, but it works. Uh, that'll be the next task after the uh, hardware, all these prototype hardware units are complete. Uh, this has, in the future, there'll be, so you can control it over Ethernet and download video. There's Trigger uh, I.O., Audio I.O. that again is not enabled yet in software. More, a few different triggers, uh, strobe outputs, a couple of analog channels uh, sampled at one mega sample per second, so you can like, get a wave, record a waveform along with your video. Uh, USB host for as mass storage device, for plugging in mass storage devices, and HDMI for uh, viewfinders and monitors. We all hate internal batteries and things that are not user replaceable, so this now has a uh, user replaceable battery, and it takes standard. We can get this out of here off-the-shelf ENEL4A uh, Nikon camera batteries 11.1 volts, it says 3.1 amp hour but that's Chinese amp hours, this is actually about uh, 2.6 or so. Uh, slight machining error on the case here, that was just due to some coordinate system shenanigans on the CNC, and that's been fi I was able to, s I noticed it in time to stop it and save this particular case, I've fixed that in the new ones, so that doesn't uh, exist. Another feature added compared to the old one is a uh, back focus ring. This allows you to adjust the back focus which is the distance between the lens back and the sensor and this allows you to uh, you basically just uh, loosen a set screw and you can turn this ring to adjust that distance and that allows you to set it so that when you set a certain distance like uh, two meters from your subject it'll actually focus at that distance rather than something else. It also allows when you adjust the uh, zoom, the focus is consistent over the zoom range. I'm sure you're all eager to see what's inside this, so let's open it up. I designed this to assemble much, much easier than the old camera with screws through the front, rather than uh, this one that had all these small screws all the way around, which was a nightmare to machine all those holes. And also they were very, very tiny screws. So this is slightly thinning. I better take the battery out before going any further. The annoying thing is they have very short cables to the uh, LCD, so I have to be careful while removing these. There we go camera opened up doesn't reveal too much. We're sort of being mooned by the main board. Everything is on the other side except for the e uh, FPGA, which is a Lattice ECP-5. That's an upgrade from the ECP-3 used in the old version. And in the old one had two boards of almost the same size, and everything, pretty much everything on those has now been compacted onto one board. Under the main board pull this off gingerly because there's thermal uh, a thermal pad and then disconnect a couple of cables this one's always a bit difficult there we go here's the other side of the main board it's got the same DM8148 uh, TI system on chip as the old camera and this is the RAM for the image acquisition. Basically the FPGA takes care of all the high speed data coming in off of the 16 LVDS channels from the image sensor, stores that to RAM, then generates a standard video feed into the uh, CPU which can then save it out to compressed H.264 on storage devices like an SD card. Other than that, there's not a whole lot. There's a bunch of power supplies here. Actually, most of the power supplies are, uh, are here. There's a lot of voltage rails on this. There's uh, 1.1 volt core for the FPGA, 
1.2 volt for the Ethernet Phi, 1.35 for the uh, DM8148 core, 1.5 for RAM, uh, 2.5 for some analog stuff, 3.3 and 5. On the other side of the case we got a small board for the I.O. connectors, or half of them, and the image sensor board. Uh, this uh, small uh, aluminum piece here conducts heat away from both the image sensor and the uh, DM8148 CPU because those both get very very hot without proper cooling. And there's another board up in this corner that has the I.O. Uh, the uh, power switch and trigger button and a few LEDs. This board also handles the power connections to the battery. And I designed it this way so that there are very few or in fact no uh, wires you have to make. Everything is just connected with standard low-cost FFC cables so there's, you don't have to make custom wires and assembly is very very quick and easy. The image sensor board itself just has a bunch of power supplies. There's a couple of uh, lin uh, switching regulators followed by linear regulators to provide a clean analog supply as well as eight channels of uh, an 8 channel DAC and some uh, uh, high current op amps to drive some, uh, some uh, various analog signals that need to be adjusted during operation. I've had to hack up these boards a little bit because one of the supplies in the sensors was, sensor was labeled VDD-LV and was labeled the LVDS power supply so I thought oh sure that has to be digital but no it turns out that also drives some analog stuff and so I had that was connected straight to a buck regulator so I had to uh, connect that over through a ferrite bead to, uh, to the, uh, one of the other analog supplies to feed that. That's off to spin this board for the actual production run to fix that problem. I also had to do some hacking on this one to correct some noise issues with the image sensor. There were some horizontal banding issues. It turned out to be a couple of things. Some oscillation between the two power supplies and some noise on some of the uh, outputs of these op amps which were driving capacitive loads that can be sometimes be unstable. These ones are advertised as being fully stable with capacitive loads, however they still have a little few millivolts of oscillation which was causing problems. This side of the board is basically just LVDS lines to get all those 16 channels off of the board and of course the image sensor itself. Here's the inside of the case. Uh, this one hasn't been cleaned up yet. This is part of a batch that I'm of uh, 12 that I'm building for uh, as prototypes. Uh, you can see the machining of these uh, back pieces in this video, uh, click here. There's also some cool high speed shots taken by this camera of its own pieces being made. I was building a full set of 12 of everything, however I'm down one board because the cat happened. I had a prototype camera sitting like this here, and Trixie sat down up in this area here, and this, this rotor was sitting here. You might recognize this from that uh, compressor uh, pump video. And of course she knocked this off, fell down, fell right onto the FPGA, knocked it clean off the board. You can see the little mark where it hit. That was really annoying, having a perfectly good board damaged, but that's why I built uh, 12 of these prototype boards. And now I'm a lot more careful about where I leave things on this desk and making sure that there's nothing heavy above them. On the other side there's not very much, just a small board for the uh, encoder wheel and a speaker and of course uh, the LCD. So that pretty much completes the teardown. There's not a huge amount in this camera. Anyway, I'm sure you want to see what uh, the video this thing produces is like, so here's some uh, demo shots I've taken. Taking videos is super easy. Just hit record, cause your event, and press stop. And you can go into play, and we can seek through. Let's see, there's the drop. Then we can use the wheel to scroll through. Oh, that looks cool. Yeah, I'll set this up properly and take some proper shots.